Joe, here we are with episode two of season three, The Shape of Things to Come, or as I said earlier, The Shape of Things That Are Dumb. I got a lot. I got a lot here. There's a lot of caps locks. A lot of them. <laughs> and I'm going to read my last one. The look on your face is like, how do I self-edit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my, Let me read the last thing that I wrote. This was okay. the last thing I wrote. <laughs> While I finish the episode. Okay. And I'm not going to scream it, but imagine that this is in caps locks and I'm screaming. Wonderful. And I said, what is with all of these anonymously evil adults for no fucking reason? I hate this show so goddamn much. Someone please explain the appeal of any of this to me. I really thought you were going to say, what is, I'm tired of these, you know, motherfucking snakes on this yeah. motherfucking plane. I there was another point in the notes when I wrote, I hate this show. I hate this Dean character. I'm not built for television like this, but I will still see this podcast through to the end. Yeah, so uh, I completely forgot about this because I think it's just like, ugh, I, I it was a memory I did not want to have, but. I got to tell you, Matt, it's my favorite game to play. It's like, when did the show jump the shark, right? Did it jump the shark when they shot Trey? Did it jump the shark when the events of the end of season three happen? No, they jumped the shark with fucking Dean Hess. (laughs) Because I fucking hate this guy. (laughs) Well, and here's the irony, right? So we've got Dean Hess, who is an actual Dean. Yeah. But then we also have Jimmy Cooper, who they're just deaning. Yes. Like, so like, like, I'm just sitting here and I'm watching this show and I'm like, Jimmy Cooper, another one of my probably early favorite characters, out of nowhere is just like all of the character development that we saw throughout the first season and the beginning of the second season just fucking flushed down the toilet. Making the same fucking mistakes. Same mistakes. And I'm watching this episode. Like marrying Julie Cooper. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's see if that even fucking happens, Joe. Because I'm, yeah. I'm sitting here and I'm watching it. And I have that early knowledge in my brain that there's only a finite episodes that he's in. Mm-hmm. Right? Because he's a guest star now. He's not, yeah. He's not a series regular anymore. He's sitting there at the restaurant proposing... He's proposing to Julie Cooper, and I wrote in, the, in my notes, I'm partially just expecting Jimmy to get gunned down like a bad mob movie right now. Like, it's just, all he's doing is like digging a deeper hole of debt to a guy who's already said, I have people who will handle this for me. Yeah. Which is as clear of an indication as you can get get of, I will have you killed. Like, yeah. without outwardly saying it. And then this motherfucker's like, hey, can you write me a check for $35,000? Yeah. <laughs> like, craziness. So, in this episode, the main focus of this episode is that the Dean comes in. He's going to determine if Ryan yes. and marissa get to attend school first of all i love eric mabius who plays dean hess eric mabius because i'm also a huge ugly betty fan and i feel like there's a lot of crossover at this time because alan dale who played caleb Caleb. he's dead and now on ugly betty he's on a but like (laughs) i now i need to look at when ugly betty started because eric mabius is like the main guy who plays alan dale's son on ugly betty so i wonder what alan dale like did in between what what other nefarious <laughs> patriarch of a, of a rich family he played in between ugly betty every once in a while i have to ask you for a spoiler for just the sake of forward momentum sure <laughs> there are 23 more episodes left in this season uh-huh is dean hest gonna be there for all 23 of these goddamn episodes oh fuck no fuck okay no. thank god <laughs> like, i was like i may I may have to tap out. It was very like, it was like that moment when you like, when you remember something that you've repressed. Like he showed up on the screen. Well, first of all, Dr. Kim or 
whatever her fucking name is, the principal of the school. Yeah. She like, oh, and you know, the dean of discipline, which like That sounds like a wrestling name. I want him to that be my That sounds dean like of what discipline. they would refer that's that's what they would refer that is the nickname to a wrestler. Yeah. <laughs> like like they like a, in an eighties wrestling federation. Yes. A guy called like <laughs> the scholar. Yeah. The superintendent of SmackDown, the dean of discipline. Yeah, he walks in, he's banging a ruler in his hand, and he's got a graduation cap in there. And yeah, like Vince McMahon is just like, here he comes, the dean of discipline, the scholar. And, he's like, and then school's out forever. And he's breaking a ruler over a wrestler's yeah. back, man. Let me tell you what, Jabroni, I'm going to take it to detention right now. Um, all right, so... That's the whole thing going on. And what the dean decides is that Marissa is no longer welcome in this school and that Ryan can stay. The level of smug douchiness yes. with every scene with this guy, yes. every single sequence where he's just like, people don't... Like, what? So... I'm watching Abbott Elementary finally after everyone has yes. told me to watch Abbott Elementary. And like the thing that is so beautiful about Abbott Elementary is that it depicts the way that we would hope that teachers are. And for the most part, every teacher that I'm friends with is, which is that you can fix any kid, even a kid who's like a truly bad, maybe comes from a rough home and is aggressive mm -hmm. and, and maybe even attacks his classmates like... If you give the, put in the time, there's a slight chance that you can turn things around for that kid. So watching a show where the dean of the school's entire perspective is just like, kid with a bad attitude, fuck him. <laughs> get, get, like, like, I'm just like, I can't deal with this. Like, this is so frustrating and like I, no listen, you little bitch <laughs> yeah listen no one hates marissa cooper more than myself but to sit there and basically just be like hey just because you shot your rapist and because you struggled with addiction and drug problems isn't an excuse get the fuck out of my school i never want to see you again. like what what especially when i'm just like it's her senior year just put up with it for like six or seven more months and then move the fuck on. Like, I was yeah. just, I hated this character so, so much. I think one of my other notes I wrote, this show is genuinely infuriating to watch as a person who is incapable of not caring about things too much. Not where it's like, <laughs> even if I think that this show is stupid and all the characters are stupid, I'm still wildly invested in their lives and get like very upset when scenes like this happen mm -hmm. I, w I had to put on totally killer afterwards i needed to put on something like lighthearted, fluffy and funny you know like a, a kieran and shipka slasher <laughs> yes like i just needed something now we have what's the girl taylor is that the girl who's taylor taylor townsend taylor, taylor townsend <laughs> here's the thing we're gonna try to the show is gonna try to paint taylor townsend mm -hmm. as the villain here for for ratting on Marissa to the dean. I just got to say I feel for this girl. <laughs> oh, oh, Joe's Joe's disappeared. <laughs> Hear me out. Hear me out. Okay. When she tells Summer like do you know what it's like having to do oh. all the grunt work while the supposed president of this club is just fucking around? <laughs> like Yeah. I'm like, you know what? I have no problem whatsoever believing that Marissa Cooper was an awful president of this club and that this girl put in the work for three years and probably deserves this president, this vacant presidency seat. Now, her methods, everything else, I'm not saying I agree with that, but I'm saying like Summer probably shouldn't have fucked around and found out in this situation. This yeah. girl has been damaged from three years of reporting to the least reliable girl in the world, Marissa Cooper. Yeah. And then Summer's just going to fucking powerhouse her way. Like the whole time that this is happening, I'm watching it. And I'm just like, Summer, don't do this. <laughs> this is... Yeah. Summer, you're not on the right. You're not on the right side for this one. <laughs> yeah. Not, um... you're, this is. And and who knows? Maybe if Summer didn't do that, none of the other events would have taken place. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like True. it's it's truly possible. I really love the line because I think the line is: Do you know what it's like to have all the responsibility and none of the power? 
Yes. And I'm like, ah, because yeah, at that time, right in, or not at that time, but in like high school, things are, it's all a microcosm for the real world. And so like, you know, you see someone who's very power hungry, who's giving like really like, like Tracy Flick vibes. <laughs> Right? She know what it's it is? It's like she's Tracy Flick, but also she kind of looks like the super Jesus-y girl from Freaks and Geeks at the same time. <laughs> like it's like a weird <laughs> blend of both. When I was in school, I was friends with everybody who was a musician. Mm-hmm. And I will never forget my senior year how devastated one of my friends was who like did the school band worked his ass off, became an incredible trumpet player, made it to the point that he was like a like, you know, one of the top band kids was getting a music scholarship, etc. and then for the senior sure. superlatives, it went to a kid who was the singer of a punk band at the school for most musically talented and like the devastation, <laughs> the devastation that he felt with like how much work he had put in for 4 years for just like like and it's like one of those things where it's like, does the superlatives like matter? Not mm-hmm. really. But when you're an 18 year old kid who's it's dedicated, yeah, you dedicate it at least. Let's say you start playing in fourth grade, eight to nine years of mastering a craft for like a dude who just sings in a band that people like to like take that glory from you, like. It sucks. It's a bummer. It's like a real bummer to deal with. So I get that. I think that's why I empathize with this character of like, she's putting in the work. She's doing everything right. She doesn't complain for three years about the lack of leadership (laughs) that she has to work with. Finally, there is a vacancy for her to, to be able to step up and take just a little bit of the credit for all of the work that she done she's done Mm -hmm. and then this girl's friend who has done nothing for four years Mm -hmm. just steps in and takes that from you like yeah i'd be pissed too you know maybe more happens over the next couple episodes where my tune will change but your tune will change but i guarantee it with the information i have in episode two i think that summer made more trouble than it was worth sure Um, For no reason. Yeah. We're making an ad. Napping ads. I hear that Gary Sinise is free. Oh, okay, great. He hasn't worked since 2020. (laughs) So um, what would be the script that we would have Gary Sinise say for the Napping Through Happy Hour podcast? Listen to this damn show. Damn it. The Napping Through Happy Hour podcast brought to you by Geekscape. Real life, real drama, real time. I'm Gary Sinise. That's the ad. That's the ad. That's the ad. Can we go back to the fact that they named Dean Hess after like a literal Nazi? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, uh, that's also, listen, we were talking about Harry Potter last week. Yeah. Sometimes shows aren't creative. You know, like (laughs) they literally named the worst professor Umbridge. Like, let's let's be, let's be clear. Dolores Umbridge. (laughs) I want to talk about the Marissa stuff because... This Marissa stuff, or Marissa, I'm sorry, the Kirsten stuff. I want to mm-hmm. talk about the Kirsten stuff. First off, the fact that Seth Cohen has to make a starter pack for his own mother is one of the most narcissistic yeah. things I've ever heard come out of Seth Cohen's mouth, which is insane. But this, like, hey, you can do a halfway house with me at this, like, secluded beach. This is given single white female vibes in, yeah. like, such a fucked up way. Is this I'm your just, horror like, moment? <laughs> That's the horror moment. I'm like, Kirsten, watch it. Got- Maybe you should have watched some of Seth's movies because you would know better than to go to the middle of nowhere with a person you yeah. barely know. Let's just go to Lake who- Arrowhead. <laughs> yeah, who seems fucking unhinged. And I guess that's that was the other thing I wrote in all caps. Like I wrote, I'm so annoyed and confused because I have no clue what Charlotte's motivation is still. <laughs> like... Like, is this, is she someone who just, like, goes into rehab to fuck with rich people? Like, what, like, what is, Joe, as frustrated and pissed off as this episode made me, credit where credit's due, 
when it was over, I wanted to start the next episode just to get some form of closure. Mm -hmm. Because I know the OC. I know that neither one of these subplots is making it to the double-digit episode numbers. Sure. Like, like, this shit's gonna get wrapped this up. This is but all... Th this is, like, by the by like midway... By the mid-season finale, they'll be gone like Alex, right? <laughs> yeah. it's it, It'll be far in the rearview mirror. You know what I mean? Like, I know... I've learned that the OC is not a singular season, but five mini seasons shoved into a 25 episode run. So sure. like mm -hmm. in my mind, I'm like by episode five or six, I'm yeah. sure that one, if not both of these characters that are infuriating me will be gone. But for the time being, I'm really annoyed. And I guess we have, before we completely wrap up, we have to say that the Dean gets inappropriately aggressive to a girl who's already leaving. Like, Marissa's already like, fine, I'll go. And then he grabs her arm. Ryan jumps to her defense, clocks the Dean, and the Dean goes, great. Now I don't have to try to find a way to kick you out. Like, he's just like, I was... Like, it's so anonymously evil. It's so just like, I've already made a decision that I will get you suspended or expelled, but now you've handed the expulsion to me i don't want to spoil the songs of the episode just yet but the the overwhelmingly sad version of california playing as they're like looking through the chain link fence i started laughing that's so it's so on the nose we've been on the run driving in the sun <laughs> running down the 101 <laughs> i'm telling you it's it, like this the season finale should have been these two episodes. Like we're going to kick off actually. the season. We're going to kick off the season with, you know, a two hour season premiere, which I kind of hope that they did do that. Or it's like, we're just giving you two episodes back to back because like to have that be the song at the end of the second episode. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. That's really weird. It, it is funny that like the Trey story, like it's, they treat it like a big cliffhanger moment at the end of season two and like cliffhanger. It certainly was, but nope. They aired them as two separate episodes. First one on September 8th, second one on September 15th. They just, but it's like, I feel like they only use the Trey episode as the season finale. And these is the season kickoff just to make sure that their school time like linked up with the actual dates on the calendar. Like, mm. because these do this ending feels more like a, Ooh, I've got to wait six months to find out what happens next. Yeah. While like, I don't know, like I feel like by next week, we're already going to know like what's happening with, I would not be shocked if both of them are back in school by the time episode four is over. Like it's right. just like it's just like I know the OC. They don't they don't stretch these storylines out very long. You will, uh, we, uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Right, we'll we'll see what or you know they just go they go on the run riding in the sun <laughs> driving down, down the, the one hundred one. All right. So since we keep singing it, let's talk about the songs of the episode. Uh, we've got. Some pretty heavy hitters in this one. When they're going to get a stack of pre-registration pancakes, we hear Death Cab for Cutie, Soul Meets Body. Cobra Verde's Get the Party Started plays when Summer and Seth are walking around the carnival. When Seth and Summer are getting off of a carnival ride, Franz Ferdinand's Do You Want To is playing. And then as we said, when Ryan and Marissa are both getting expelled, California 2000, the sad version by Phantom <laughs> Planet is playing. Um, Joe, I want to ask you what the song of the episode is. I feel like I know what you're going to pick, and it's probably not the same as mine. I uh, So I, I'm torn between two songs. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pick the one that made me go, huh, <laughs> which is Get This Party Started. Because <laughs> you barely hear it. You yeah. barely hear it. And the cover itself is such like a sleepy, like, get this party started on a Saturday night. Like, it's so, yeah. it's so sleepy. But when I heard it, I was like, huh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. For some reason, I thought you were going to go with Sad California. Um, I already made this promise. Every time Death Cab shows up, it's going to be the song of the episode for me because it just feels... Like the song that I think of when I think of the OC and Soul Meets Body is definitely one of my favorite Death Cab songs. So I'm going to 
going to give credit to that one on that. Now, Joe, as you know, when when Seth or when Ryan and Marissa were kicked out mm-hmm. uh, of school, it was all the talk. Every every news, uh, you know, pop gossip article was written about it. It was a huge deal. Everyone remembers the day that they heard that Ryan and Marissa were kicked out. Uh, so I have to ask, what pop culture moment have you been getting caught up on? Joe, you know, I'll start on this one. Uh, something that people have been telling me to watch for a while. I put it off for a bit. I finally watched it, and it was definitely one of my favorite uh, shows that I watched in 2023 was The Bear. Um, the Bear is a fucking delight. Mm-hmm. It's it's a little bit more stressful than... than um, I, I was referring to it as like a more stressful uh, Ted Lasso. Yeah. <laughs> in the sense that I think it yes. hits a lot of like the Ted Lasso um people coming together and being like you know one full team and all of that stuff but it's definitely it's definitely way more uh stressful and if you've ever worked any type of kitchen um I've never worked a kitchen quite like that but I worked the late night cafeteria at a ritzy college for a year mm-hmm. and that sucked. So I feel like it's about the same. Uh, there were definitely moments that I had some flashbacks of like, Oh no, I remember, I remember these days where we're running out of food faster than we can feed the kids and the kids getting frustrated and trying to like get everything ready in time. So love the bear. Totally worth watching. It's like, 16 episodes right now on Hulu. I'm sure season three is around the corner soon. But uh, yeah, watch those first two seasons, get caught up, and uh, enjoy enjoy the greatness that it that it has. How about you, Joe? Well, one of the gifts that I received this year for Christmas was um, from the uh, creator of Milk Bar um, in various cities. But it is uh, her name is Christina Tosi. And she wrote a cookbook. Um, I think it's her second or third cookbook, but this one is all about cookies. Okay. And like uh, last year started kind of like my, what I keep calling anxiety baking, <laughs> like late at night, just like, you know, can't go to sleep, need to focus on something. And I love cookies. So I was like, I'll just make a bunch of cookies. And so my sister got me this book, which like, I love her because she was like, you know, you can, it's like, I didn't really look in the book. I just knew it was a cookbook and you like making cookies, but it was more of a vessel for gift cards. <laughs> but fair. Yeah. I really fucking love this book. It's also like, it's, and I told her, I was like, oh, you can tell that this is a book made for like intermediate to advanced like bakers because most the the measurements are all in weight. Like all of the measurements are by weight uh, for like sugar and flour. But uh, I made one of the one of the first cookies I made or the first cookie that I made is uh, a butter scotch pecan pudding cookie, Mm -hmm. which has all three of those things. And the pudding is like uh, instant pudding powder, which gives like if the recipe did not explicitly say that it was going to feel like it feels underdone, but really what it is, is just moist and delicious. Then I would have like put it in, the, <laughs> I would have ruined them because I would have put it in the, in the oven for a little bit longer, but man, those cookies were good. And it's just, it's that thing where, you know, you've nailed a, Like for me, I know I've nailed a cookie recipe really well when it feels like it's something that I could get at a bakery. Like I could have paid money for this, but I made it. And so that's my, it's not, it's, you know, sort of pop culture-y, but um, that is uh, kind of what I'm obsessed with. And I'm about to make, um, probably by the time I've already, this episode airs, I will have made their uh, uh, cinnamon toast crunch marshmallow cookies. Oh, God damn. I know. (laughs) You know, we're we're (laughs) starting 2024 off with type 2 diabetes. Hey, you know what? It's better than just the regular type one, I guess. Uh, <laughs> yeah, not the Nick Jonas one, right? <laughs> yeah, aim for the stars. Um, so, well, Joe, I got a lot of questions. I don't know if I'm going to get a lot of answers, but I am still going to follow these white people problems to the very end to see if I get a couple of them. So hopefully next week 
there'll be a resolution to all of the white people problems and then it'll just be a ton of episodes of them having a good time together i think that's i think that's what's going to happen that sounds like the osa Listening to the Geekscape Network.